And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Zakaznik. Now this is from Cosmo Drone Games, people know them, for their game Smartphone Inc., a game that's been doing very well. This game is a game that seems like it's aimed at kids, in fact the rules kind of lead us in that direction, in which you're building a nature preserve. This is in Moscow and you're putting together your own preserve, trying to build it up so that you can have different animals and keep those animals in this preserve and let them run free. And that's pretty much the game. It is a worker placement game. Here is how it plays. In this game, the goal is to get as much reputation as possible. As the game progresses, you're going to be filling in your area here, your park, with three different types of terrain, and each time you cover a terrain, you will get a reputation, which is why these stars are here, moving your marker here on the board. Uh, during the course of the game, you're also going to be having a habitat for different animals here. So this peacock butterfly will give one reputation point. To have this, I just need two of the grassland or the meadows here. And once I have that, I'll be able to finish this one and simply get a point. And there are these easy animals to finish, which are usually one or two points. And then there are more difficult animals to get, which are going to range between three and four points, but they're going to need a larger habitat. Finally, there's event cards, and in many of these event cards, there are cards that will give you points at the end of the game. So if you have eight of these in your reserve, you'll get five points at the end of the game. Some will simply give you points when you draw them, and some will give you points if you have more of this than anyone else in the reserve when you draw them. So, how does the game play? On a player's turn, in each round of the game, whoever has the, this number one goes first, you're going to place your worker on one of these five spots. If you place it here, you'll draw an event card. And I already mentioned, event cards can give you um, points, or they can give you special things that you can do later on. Like here, put a terrain on top of a previous place one. You can also go to this spot. This is the these two spots. Only one person can go to these. As many people as one can go here. Here, you'll take two animals and put them face up in the areas here. These are animals that you are going to work on and try to provide the terrain types for. Here you can take one. Here you can take two different terrain types and put them in your field, scoring the points for them. And here you can take one. Now when you do finish a terrain type, so let's say for example, to finish this great spotted woodpecker, I need two forests. So I have two forests. So I'll finish this, I'll score the point, and then I'll take a green animal, matches this type, and put it in one of these forests. This is the woodpecker now living there. I can no longer use that forest for future things. So if later on, I got this Eurasian beaver, I need two forests, one and one, I would need another forest to count that. If you want to play an advanced version of the game, you would even say that these have to be next to each other, so two forests next to each other, which makes these red ones a little harder since this would need two water next to each other and four planes next to each other. And that's going to continue to happen. Now once one player gets to 10 points up here, everyone's going to get an extra worker per round. And once you get to 25 points, everyone's going to get a, a third worker that they're going to use. So rounds will go a little bit longer. Uh, that's basically it. You're just going to keep going until one person has completely covered their pad with land tiles or when one of these two decks runs out. When that happens, uh, everyone will finish the round up. You'll score any event cards that have not been shown yet to people for points. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. Now the acrylic pieces here are pretty cool looking. Uh, they're a little hard maybe to see on camera, but they look really neat here. I, I like putting these animals in the park. The only problem I have with these animals is there's not enough of them. You can run out of these green ones sometimes very easily. These are pretty neat too. I like that the planes here, you can see that the planes, there's actually, I mean, there, there's some that are the same. Like you can see these two are the same, but there's enough different ones in there that when you're building your, your area, your reserve, it has a different look to it. The tiles themselves are fairly good quality. The animals on the flip side of them, it tells you information about the animals, how much they weigh, how long they are, where they live, and where you can find these now which is pretty neat, you know, so some information, educational information. The event cards are, you know, a little boring looking, but they're pretty much clear on what they do. 
and everything else, the board itself, it's just a, it's a good production. Now, as an adult, the game is a little simplistic. There is literally three different places to put people. Get more territory, put the animals, you know, get animal cards, and get event cards. There are a few problems with the game that I think will cause some people to not enjoy it. One of them is the fact that when you draw those event cards, they are wild swings. I mean, so there are cards that give you points right now. So this one here gives four points. Well, you saw one when I was showing it off that gave one point. And I believe there's one in here that gives like eight points. So there's a lot of points. Like the president comes to visit you. And so these, these points here can be, here's the president, oh, eight points. But still, I draw one point, you draw eight. That's a huge swing difference. Also, I would get like, oh, have the most of the forest. And I only have one forest because I've been working on the other one. So it's just, it's kind of a crapshoot as to which cards you're going to be drawing from this deck. That's fine, I guess, but it makes the game very, very lucky. Also, of course, there's the, you put out the lands, and then you hope the animals you need that match those lands will come up. I really think you should play with this, the, the lands have to be next to each other, because other than that, it's just too easy. You just collect things, and oh, I need three and three. But having them next to each other adds a little bit more challenge to the game. And you won't run out of the animal tokens if you do it that way. Uh, another weird thing about the game is that it's a worker placement game. Everyone can place one worker out, and then when you get 10 points, everyone has two workers. Well, honestly, you know, there are games that do this, and you're like, ooh, but th that's such a weird rule in this one because it actually makes the game slower. And here's why. There are two spots on the board only one person can go to. If you're playing a four-player game, you take one, I take one, the other two people take other spots, whatever they might want to take. Once we have two workers, you take one, I take one of those one spots, and then we go around the table taking lower spots for a while. It just lengthens the game out and doesn't really change anything. It doesn't add dynamics. There's not more places to put things. There's not a specific number of rounds in the game. You are simply just putting out more workers. So how is that different than just doing it multiple rounds? Turn order doesn't change as, as much. That's it. And that just seems odd to me that that is... That's just an odd rule to me. I mean, maybe it's good to teach kids that you can have games where you get multiple workers. Nah. I do like the art. I like the theme. Making nature parks for animals. Good idea. And this could be used with kids as an introduction to other better worker placement games. So in that regard, uh, Zakaznik is good at like an educational thing and the game isn't bad. It's just going to leave adults wanting more, I think. For kids, it will do better. So there you go. Dice Tower Judgment, good for kids.